Okay, guys, we're back this uh, uh -oh. week, Wednesday. We're all able to use the stuff that we went over. Don't lie to me either. <laughs> can't handle that today. <laughs> you can't um, handle the truth. No? I was for Globals. You were? Yep. I did. Okay. And then the reverse. We went over, I mean, a lot of a lot of good stuff, guys. So, I mean, you know, you really need to go over it as much as you can and use it as much as you can. And really this weekend, I mean, I know it's only been a day, you know, so really what I concentrate towards is getting to today, to Wednesday, and then using it Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then come back on Monday and say, hey, look, you know, I messed with it. It was doing this, I don't know, or you know what, it was great. I, I liked it, or I don't get it. You know, so come back with some feedback or whatever, hopefully. You know, hopefully you get it or whatever, so. Uh. Okay, so everybody remembers how to do speakers. Yes. How do you global? How do you global? G. Control G. G is only one. So if you're in hyper keys, it's only going to be one stroke. It's only going to global one stroke. And then it, so if you hit G twice, it's going to global, then it's going to hit the letter G and think that you're ready to go. So it's only going to be one stroke. So if you need more than one, which the speaker's going to be, remember? So I was telling you red, red, bob, bob, black, black, dum, dum, <laughs> all of those, remember? So, I mean, these are, you know, Smith, Smith, um, all of those are going to be twice. So you're going to need to hit what? Control G. Control G. Say it. Control G. <laughs> so. It, it's really important, guys, because then you're going to be, oh, what? It's not doing it, and hyper keys is G, and uh, it's not getting both of them. Okay? So that's why. All right. Paragraphs. That's where we left off. Some of the choices that AutoMagic offers at the start or end of a paragraph. End of a paragraph. Here my cursor's on the very beginning of this speaker paragraph. Pressing 2 would give this paragraph to the second speaker on the speaker list. Pressing 3 would open the speaker. So what they're talking about here is changing your speakers. Okay? So say you hit this and you hit uh, speaker 1. And it wasn't speaker 1, it was speaker 2. Well, you know, just by what he was saying, and the one who was asking the questions before, and Mr. Jones, Mr. Smith was asking the questions, Mr. Jones is the one that objected, so you're like, uh, that's not right. Why is Mr. Smith going to object to his own question? Well, you know he's not, you know? So it's going to be, you know, Mr. Jones, okay? If Mr. Smith is the one asking the questions. So it's not going to be the same one asking or objecting to something. But it could be set up in this situation where Mr. Smith is asking the questions and then he goes, um, Judge, can we approach a bench for a second? So he just asked a question. They just said the answer and he goes, uh, Judge, can we approach a bench for a second? So it could be. But right here, what they're telling you is if you want to change the speaker, this is how you do it. You don't really need to go through all of this whole step. This is kind of a little bit redundant, but 
They're gonna show you how to do it. List so I could choose someone else. Other choices make it easy. So really what you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here, okay? So in your tutorial, you should have your speaker set up. Go up a little bit to where it says like Mr. Anderson and all of that. And notice how if you arrow back and forth, I mean if you J and L back and forth, try to go right and left, it doesn't go into Mr. Anderson. Okay? So to get in there, what you have to do is place your cursor right here and then click on it. Okay, so left click on that. No, go up. Right there, Mr. Anderson. Yeah. See how it highlights it? Go up. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. You got it? Yeah. Now open up F2. See how it gives you your speakers now? So now just choose a speaker. So you don't have to go through the whole process of highlighting it, hitting enter, whatever. You just pick the number. Just pick whatever number you want, whatever name you want. That's how you change the speaker, okay? Pretty easy, no big deal. Or you can go the long way through this thing, which usually, if it's coming through here, you're gonna have to highlight this anyway. Then it's gonna give you the option of changing the speaker. Guys. You already took your hands off the thing to get the arrow in here, to light it up, whatever. Now you're gonna choose three, which is gonna bring up two, you know, the F2 for you. Now you have to choose a number. You're going through too many steps already, okay? Now if you wanna do it, that's fine. If you don't remember, I don't remember. It's gonna come back to you pretty quick because it's not that hard. Arrow here, left click, lights it up, F2, choose a speaker, go on. Okay. Did you join this paragraph to a preceding one, or to change it to any other kind of paragraph in the system? And the info bar is showing the keyboard shortcuts for these functions. This time my cursor is on the first word of the paragraph. At this spot, pressing 4 would change this to a byline using the speaker question format. So what they're saying here is like, you know, say you came in here and you think that he's going to go into colloquy asking the judge something. And he's like, um, where did you go to the store after all? So now he's back into question and answer. Well, you didn't have time. You just started writing, where did you go to the store after all? And then and the witness says, I went to HEB. Oh, okay. Well, tell us about the trip. Well, now he's in Q&A again, okay? So now you don't have your byline there, okay? And I'm going to show you a quick way of doing it. So get on to... Right there, right there where you're at. So the first word assumes right after Anderson. Yeah. And what's the symbol for the question? F3. Hit F3. Cool. See how it set up the byline? So what they're going to do right here, and for those of you that are watching the, uh, let's change the. For those of you that are watching the video, what they just did was, he came here, but he went through kind of a longer way. The way that I'm telling the students is, all you have to do is be right here. Put your cursor right here, not in here, not on the speaker. Now you're on the first word of the, of the sentence, on the O. And then you just hit F3, and it's automatically going to set it up like this on a byline. And you're going to see right here, the B stands for byline. Don't look it? Yes. B stands for byline, okay? Then question, 
speaker, question, answer, question, answer. You see how it goes? And see how, you know, when, when we had the F for the fixed line, you know, so that's how you're gonna know what kind of line it is right there. Okay, so if you ever need to change it, you come in that little box, you put your arrow in there, left click, and then that's gonna open up that little box, remember? And you can change it to centered, paragraph, parenthetical, any of those things, okay? The speaker paragraph to an answer. I'll press the seven key. We saw one byline format, now let's see another. I'll press 1 to turn this into a byline in the question speaker format, and pressing 2 would indicate that Mr. Jones is asking the question. Two different byline formats very easily inserted. This time let's go to... I don't even know what they're doing here. I have no idea. When we set it up, Q&A, here, that's the way it's set up. Bye. And it's going to set up the byline just like that, okay? So that's what they're doing. That's all you need to know. Okay? So I'm not quite sure what they're doing right here. I have no idea, but whatever. Okay? Okay. By, what does byline mean? Byline means the person by whom they're telling the questions. So the byline is who's telling the questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he's the one in the examination now. Okay? And it can be direct, cross, redirect, recross, any of those. Okay? But you don't have to put redirect, recross every time that they do a buy. So say he's, you know, Mr. Smith is asking the questions and he goes, oh, you know what, Judge, we, we need to take a second. Uh, you know, we need to approach the bench. Okay. So he's the guy that started it. He's on direct. They come back on he goes, okay, uh, go ahead, continue asking questions. Buy, question, blah, blah, blah. You don't have to put direct again because they're already, they're still on direct. You don't change it until it changes to somebody else. Okay? To the end of a paragraph. That's where you'll often want to insert a block of text from a file. So the number one choice is to read in text from a block file. But maybe you want to change the sentence to end with a question mark or a dash. Automagic is offering these shortcuts, but it's also teaching the hyper keys or speed keys. These are just some of the choices that Automagic offers because Eclipse understands the kinds of editing that you might need to do at the start or end of a paragraph. Got that? Yeah? Yes. Yeah? Do you? Tell me. The end was kind of... Guys, don't be scared Let's see, to tell me because... to change the sentence just offering these shortcuts. Oh, but... what, what part? I guess it's like you said, we didn't need to know that what they did that, that second time. Yeah, no. And right here, they're just telling you, changing it to a, to a period or a question, and that's how you do it in speed keys, remember? Mm -hmm. I mean, in hyper keys. It's just P or Q. And you can be anywhere in this sentence. You could be this sentence, it could be nine lines long kind of a long sentence as long as it's the same sentence not a paragraph but a sentence okay because if you put it here and it keeps going and it's got all these sentences it's only going to put it at the end of that sentence okay but it's also teaching the hyper keys or speed keys these are just some of the choices that Automagic offers because Eclipse understands the kinds of editing that you might need to do at the start or end of a paragraph. Got it? Yes. Any questions about that? Pretty straightforward. No big deal. How to change speakers within Total Eclipse. In Total Eclipse, this answer needs to be changed to a speaker paragraph. Here's a keyboard method in case you'd rather not use the mouse. Simply place your cursor in this first line and press the home key twice. 
Then press F2 to see the speaker list. To select Miss Sutherland. You can also do it that way too. So if you get back in there, get on to Anderson again. Or Smithson, whatever. And just do home home. Seven. Well, it'll get you in there. Did it open up your speaker box? Oh, no. You home? Seven. No, I pushed control for seven. No, 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 no. Yeah. Just do home. Home again. Okay. Home is going to get you in there. What they're, what they're doing right here, it didn't, it didn't open it up, which is no big deal. As long as you're in the speaker box, and I guess what they're saying is, if you don't have a speaker there already, so if you get in the middle of a sentence, and let's try it, get in the middle of that, in a, in a sentence, on the foundation, on the F, and do home. It's going to put you on there because it it's already has. So maybe what we need to do is get up there and uh, go down. You don't want to go up? Let's go there. Where that cue is. Go down. Right there. So put it on, sir. And do home, home, home. Yeah, it's not doing it. Okay, and it's not that big of a deal, guys. So if you want to put a speaker somewhere, I'm going to back this up a little bit. Twice. Line. See, and you know, really, like if you need a speaker right here, all you have to do is just put the cursor on O. Open up your speaker list, which is what? F2. F2. Choose your speaker. Just like that. Okay? Doing the home is going to get you on your speaker. So if you're right here on objection, it's like, how do I do it? Blah, 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 whatever. Okay. Well, all you do is hit home. And home is going to bring you right in there. Okay? So it'll bring you right in there or you just put your arrow in there left click on it and it's going to line it up anyway okay and press the home key twice then press f2 to see the speaker list to select miss Southern. and that's what it's telling you. you you still have to open your speaker list so you still have to push f2 so doing the home home twice is not going to matter okay but i can press the four key which is the number next to her name then press the enter key. But there's also a mouse method. Simply click on the paragraph button and select speaker. OK. Then use the mouse to point and click. OK. I want to be able to use a set of editing shortcuts that are built into the default Total Eclipse keyboard setup. In other words, I want to be able to press Control-1 from anywhere in this paragraph and have it change to speaker one. So I don't want to be confused by the order in which speakers' names happen to be listed. Lip cuts that are built into the default total speaker. Okay. Then use the mouse to point and click. Okay. I want to be able to use a set of editing shortcuts that are built into the default Total Eclipse keyboard setup. In other words, I want to be able to press Control-1 from anywhere in this paragraph and have it change to Speaker 1. I've never tried this. I never have, okay? We're going to try it right now, all right? So, go, go up. Get on Smithson. 
Oh. Oh, you know what? No. Stay on black. Okay. And now do control one. See how it changed it? Right. So get on to. Now go up. Back up to Anderson. Yeah. Go up. See how it changes it? So do control two, control three, control four. Open up your speaker box. So F2. All right? So you see that zero is the witness. One is Mr. Anderson, two is, I don't know, I guess Robert. I don't know why it's coming up like that. It should say the whole word. just the uh, maybe it's just the uh, tutorial itself mm -hmm. but I mean with the zero it should be control zero it shouldn't be one okay but I mean it may just be the way that it's set up because it's the first speaker okay so if it does that I mean don't get freaked out just know well I mean mine just does that or it just does that so instead of it being the number that it's supposed to be and and what I'm showing what I'm showing the students for those of you that are watching is I'm going to bring up the oh, so gonna let you so I'm bringing up the speaker list right here and what they're doing is they're doing control one and the witness is coming up okay what so my little sheet right here if you do control nine it brings up all of the speakers if you do control zero it's always witness. It's always the witness? That's what it says? That's what it says. Okay. So the little sheet that I gave you guys on the hyper keys and whatever, it tells you on there about the control. So control one, two, three. So what it's doing is when the students are, I'm having them doing it on their computer. That thing is saying recorder. Yes. Okay. When, when I have them doing control one, it's putting the witness. Okay, so what I think it's doing is it's doing the first speaker. Okay, so it's not necessarily number one, it's the first speaker. So control one is the first speaker, which is the witness, which you can change that if you want, remember? So if you want to move the witness down, you highlight this, push, move down, push the witness down if you want Mr. Anderson to move up and then move Mr. Anderson up, and then all of these are gonna go up. They should go up, okay? All right, that's pretty neat. I didn't even know that one. Turn that thing on. <laughs> so it's that, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> do what I say, but don't always do what I say, okay. all, right? all right? So, pretty neat right there, okay? Any questions about that? I have a question. Is it that. supposed to replace the name or just add it in there? Because mine is just adding it in there. It just yeah, just replace it. It's not replacing it. So go right here. No, 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 you're on the wrong one. Yeah, go up. Oh, you're on the wrong one. So you have to be on a real like Mr. Green. 
Go down. And get on guys. So hit F2. And which one do you want to put in there? Um, well, but you changed it. See how it how it did it different. So yeah. So what you want to do is you want to change just the speaker right there. Mm -hmm. So what you've got to do is if you remember function two. So you want to put what, Mr. Robertson? Mm -hmm. So it's the third one. Okay, so close that. So it's just kind of remembering. So now do control three. See? Oh, okay. All right. So it's pretty neat, guys. I mean, and, and you, but you have to remember. So it's not the number that it's necessarily on because it starts with zero. Okay? So be careful with that. It starts with zero and it's not control zero. Okay? Well, maybe it is because a witness is always control zero, I guess, huh? Yeah. So now you're at two. So now that's control two. Okay? So you just have to remember down the line, and it's like, well, I want Mr. Black, and I push control four, and it put Mr. White. Well, because Mr. White is the four speaker down. Not the number four speaker, but the four speaker down. Okay? Let's see how to change speakers within Total Eclipse. This answer needs to be changed. This answer needs to be changed to a speaker paragraph. Here's a keyboard method in case you'd rather not use. We just did that, didn't we? Yeah, we just did. That. Ah. How do you enlarge? Shift control F7. Control shift F7. Yep. I don't think we could do that whole thing. We'll watch it again. Let's see how to change speakers within Total Eclipse. This answer needs to be changed to a speaker paragraph. Here's a keyboard method in case you'd rather not use the mouse. Here's a keyboard method in case you'd rather not use the mouse. Simply place your cursor in this first line and press the home key twice. Then press F2 to see the speaker list. To select Miss Sutherland, I could press the four key, which is the number next to her name, then press the enter key. But there's also a mouse method. Simply click on the paragraph button. Let me back it up just a bit. To her name, then press the... And see what they tell you right here? That's a speaker one, two, three, and four. It's not speaker one, two, three, and four. You see? But speaker one, well, it's still going to be speaker two. It's going to be control two. So even here, I mean, really all this does is kind of help you as to who the speakers are. Okay? It's not really speaker one because it's number one. Speaker one is who you have. So like attorney one, attorney two, three, four, on your different things. And I'm gonna show you that and how I do it, okay? Later on, but. The enter key. But there's also a mouse method. Simply click on the paragraph button and select speaker. Okay. Then use the mouse to point and click. Okay. Wow, that's the long way of doing it. But it's another way of doing it, okay? So, I mean, if you want to, come in here, click on it, speak, pick the speaker. It's gonna open up the box, the speaker box, which is what? F2. F2, choose a speaker. Wow, if you want. I want to be able to use a set of editing shortcuts that are built into the default Total Eclipse keyboard setup. In other words, I want to be able to press Control-1 from anywhere in this paragraph and have it change 
to Speaker 1. So I don't want to be confused by the order in which speakers' names happen to be listed. Got it? So the master speaker, do we have to type that in ourselves? What's that? Um, on, in the video, yeah. under the master column, they had written... Let's see how to change. Um, like say so I don't want to be confused by the order in which speakers' names happen to be listed. That. Roll so one. From Where's that? In the master column, it had Anderson as speaker one, and it coincided with his number. In the Anywhere in this paragraph, and have it change to speaker one. So I don't want to be confused by the order in which speech to be able to use a set of editing shortcuts that are built okay. Then right use here. the mouse. Where? So in the master column, it says speaker one, and I don't yeah. have that in mind. Do yeah. Can we just type it ourselves? You don't really, I mean, it's not really necessary. If it's going to help you keep track of who speaker one is, okay. But you should have it in your, um, on your paperwork. So like when you sit down, you already know this is going to be speaker one. And, and this is the lady who's asking the questions. So it's like, all right, so my speaker one, because most of the time the speaker one, the person asking the questions is gonna be the one that you're gonna hit the most, okay? So like when, when, I do, when I do mine, my speaker one is always the state because they're the one with the burden of proof and they're probably gonna speak the most, most of the time, okay? But I already have like a little system of what I use in court, so it just kind of works for me, okay? Any questions about that? No. It's very easy to change paragraph labels that contain a misspelled speaker's name. Just press F2 to open the speaker table. Then select the name you want to change. By the way, you can also open the ch by the way, you can also open the change dialog by double clicking on a speaker's name. Type the new name and press OK. Usually you'll make the change throughout all the documents. You see what they're saying right there? So if you misspell the word, you know, it, it's uh, tiramisu, like it was here, and you spelled it tiramisu, M-A-S-U, and it's supposed to be I-S-U, or whatever, you know, the way they spelled it, then you can change it, and it's going to ask you, from there forward, all of it, well, if it's tiramisu, but you can have an attorney come in and it's like, oh, all I know is the two speakers and then I started using that number one speaker for him. And I used it from the time that he came in and took over the deposition for that guy all the way down. Well, then you don't have to change it up. All you have to do is change it from there forward. And it's just gonna change it from there forward, okay? So that's why the different options right there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna back it up just a bit. By the way, you can also open the change dialog by double clicking on a speaker's name. Type the new name and press OK. You so you can double click on it or back it up just a bit. The new name. Or you can push change. And change is going to open up this same box. So remember when I when I had you guys do it last week, where you can come in here and you can change it to like A. If you have like all nine and then you have more speakers down here and you can't get to them, I mean you can get to them, but you have to highlight it, hit enter, blah, blah, blah. All you have to do is hit the F2, select a different shortcut for it. Remember I told you that? You don't want to use the same number because it's going to be, oh, well, I've already used nine. Zero is there, so that's 10. So I'm going to use 11. No, you're not. Because once you hit one, it's going to hit one. So it's not going to give you an opportunity. So you hitting one, one real quick isn't gonna do it. Does that make sense? So there's no 11. So now you have to start using something different, which is letters, okay? And that's how they're telling you how to change it. The current is there, the master is there, which is speaker three, and then you just need to change it. So if you wanna add a color to it, you can, and that's how you do it. Remember, on the table, the little table? See? Yes. No? Totally. Press OK. Usually you'll make the change throughout all the documents. 
But let's say that you've used the same steno to identify an attorney throughout the day, but at lunch, he or she is replaced by a colleague. You could use the forward button to change the speaker's name only from lunch forward. The change is instant and even affects byline paragraphs that reference the speaker. You see what I'm telling you right there? And that's just what I was just explaining to you. So if somebody comes in after lunch and it's like, uh, Mr. Tiramisu got sick. So Mr. Johnson's going to sit in for him. So, but I'm going to use the same one for him. You can, because all you know, or all you remember from this class was the snoo and the Jew. Whatever, okay? You were, you were sleeping or drunk through the, <laughs> the things that I was telling you, and that's okay. So you, you just use the one and two or whatever, okay? Guys, there's so many different other um, speakers that you don't have to. But if you get confused and it's like, oh man, I started using one, don't freak out. Because you can change it from there down, and it's going to do it, okay? And that's how you do it. Does it matter that I still don't understand the Snoo and the Jew? No. Because we're going to go over that further. When, when we get into the in-depth of speakers, that's what I'm really going to tell you. Like my speakers and all of that. Snoo, remember, is the S-N-A-O, and the Jew is the J-A-O, and that's the two speakers. That's what they taught us in school, the two speakers. And then after that, it's just kind of Red, red, black, black, brown, brown, tall, tall, bald, bald, whatever. Remember? But I have four that I created myself. So, and it works for me. May not work for you. If it does, great. If it doesn't, I don't care. Okay? So, you just kind of pick what helps you. So, if the snoo and the Jew help you, more power to you. All right? Speaker's name. Let's take a closer look at the dialogue used to change a speaker name. It does much more. For instance, you could set up shortcuts way beyond nine. You could also select special colors to identify speakers. I don't know about the 100. Okay. To change a speaker name. It does much more. For instance, you could set up shortcuts way beyond nine. You could also select. See, and every time I've done it, as soon as you hit one, it hits the one. And it puts the number one speaker in. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. I have no idea. But it's just easy for me to put the small letters. So don't put the capital letter because then you have to go shift whatever. Just put the A. So you open the speaker box, F2, A, in there. Done. Okay? special colors to identify speakers so you can choose the colors remember so you can put the if you want to make it pretty when you open the f2 box <laughs> whatever i mean you do what you want i mean all that's going to do it's not changing the color you're not choosing the color anymore you're just doing it and it's more for the seating chart remember so if you want to create a seating chart and set up speaker groups There are also buttons on the speaker list dialog that make it easy to reorganize the order. And I was telling you that, remember? So if you want to move your speakers up and down, you're not moving, you're not really using videographer, you're not using caseworker, you're not using bald, bald, move them down. Get them out of that list. Use the ones that you're using, okay? And you just move it up and down. In which the names appear. Additional functions of the speaker list are described in the presentation on pre-translation speaker setup. Got it? All right. Any questions about that? We didn't split the atom there or anything like that, so that's super tough. Okay. And here they have a little thing right here so where you can go in and you know change them do any of that stuff that we just did so it's kind of your turn a your turn deal so if you want to come in here you know and you're here on a how do you get into the speaker to change it home home 
<laughs> you accidentally got it right. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Just throw something out. I mean, you got a 50-50 chance most of the time. Um, so. <laughs> no, that's good. It's home home. I don't know if anybody else is going to have this problem, but my home button didn't work until I took the function button off. Yes. Yes. So if it doesn't, then you're going to have to use the function home. Remember I told you about the function the first day of class, second day of class, third day of class about that function button, you know? And you can Google it. You can Google it on how to turn it off. And somebody's was really simple. Was it yours? No, right? it was Ariana's. It was Ariana's, yeah, that just had a function off right up there by the escape button. The escape button was a function off, okay? And maybe it's like control escape. I don't know, try that. Control escape or shift escape or something crazy like that. Function escape, I don't know. <laughs> You know, try it, and it was something, and I, I can't remember, I had the, the tech here show me, and it was like, oh yeah, it's blah, 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 and he did it, and it just, it took it off of mine, and now it's easy. You can use the F buttons, so you don't have to worry about the function. So if I wanna turn up the volume, which isn't that big of a deal to me, then I use the function whatever. So it reverses it, is what it does, okay? So you can come in here, and you're here on I, and how do you go in there? How do you get into the speaker? home okay well let's just say you don't remember and you hit right here everybody get right here on I okay open up your speaker list which is what F2. F2. F2 and choose a speaker got it now you have mr. what What'd you, duh, <laughs> what speaker did you choose? Mr. Green. Mr. Green, okay. So now you have Mr. Green down here. Well, you should have Mr. Robertson right here and it's still there, right? Mm -hmm. Don't freak out, no big deal. Put your cursor right up here where I object used to be. And how do you delete a line? The whole line. The whole line. Huh? It's not shifting, is it? Backspace. No. Put your hand up. <laughs> Control. Control D. Y. Control Y. Contr Control y. We've gone over this. Ah. See? Got it. So put it up there, do Control Y, and it, and it takes out that whole line. Moves the speaker up, that whole line is out, ready to go. So if you ever need to delete that line, it's control Y. Okay? <coughs> Good thing to know right there. Good thing to know. Got it? Got it. So mess with these things right here. I mean, where you can go in, mess with the different speakers, control one, control two, control three to change the speakers, remember? You can be anywhere in this sentence. So get in here, right here on and. Right here on N, asked and answered, right here, and then just do control three. See how it changed the speaker? Okay, all right. Any questions about that? Any questions about speakers? No? All right. Close out. No? Lesson, conflicts. How do you zoom in? Control shift F7. Control shift F7. Guys, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on this because we've already kind of covered it, okay? So they're kind of doing it again on the trouble scans, the conflicts, and the unresolved conflicts. Okay, which I think is you. Unresolved is you. Untrans. Untranslate. It's not unresolved. Capital C is the unresolved. Okay. Eclipse is famous for intelligent conflict resolution. Lift resolution. Let's see how it works. Here, the word table is an untranslate, although it's been intelligently guessed. 
I'll define it as a conflict. A backslash will separate each conflict choice from the... And y'all remember I told you that, okay? Remember, 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 which I'm sure y'all do. Do you have to start it out with that, remember? Um, <laughs> that was, I tried remember. it today. I tried it today and I didn't do that. Yes. It wasn't working, I couldn't figure. That's why. Okay, you have to start it out with this backslash, okay? And that tells it that it's a conflict, okay? Because if you don't, then it doesn't know. So if you don't do it exactly the way that they're telling you to do it, things aren't gonna work, okay? So you have to remember to start it out with the backslash. Next, I'll also include a command that tells the system that if a number follows, the number should be in numeral form, not written form. This conflict will go in my main dictionary. This will actually be two conflicts back to back. Your is a conflict that was resolved by the computer. Here, choice one is correct. Here you see that you can have different colors to display the conflicts that you yourself have picked as opposed to those that the computer has picked and those that have yet to be resolved. You Not that big of a deal. Okay, and I, I told you guys about the different colors and what, what it means, okay? It's not, all it's gonna tell you is what, it, what the computer did and what the software did, okay? Not that big of a deal. You also notice that the dictionary indicates that Eclipse Artificial Intelligence has learned one rule for resolving this conflict in the future. Each time you select a conflict choice, Eclipse can learn from your editing the more you use it, the smarter it gets. You can always select. Remember I told you that too? The more you use it, the smarter it gets to what you want it to do, okay? Like a different conflict choice if necessary. The number for each choice is displayed in the status bar. Remember that too? Status bar down here, you just pick the number, chooses the right one, okay? All right the lower left of your screen, but you can also right click on a conflict to see its choices and pick the one that is correct. Y'all remember that too? So if you want to change it, you can. Right click, not left click because it's going to choose that word mm -hmm. as in if you want to do something totally different. It's more of a command. So this is kind of right click and it's something totally different. Any questions about that? Those are all just like the automatic box on the left, right? What's that? The right click box, the drop down box, and the yeah. portion at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, pretty much. But if the auto magic doesn't give it to you, then it should be down here. Okay? So if there's different ways of writing it, it it's stuff like that, it's going to be down here. But usually, it's, it's usually always in the auto magic. Okay? <laughs> Any questions about that? Here's an important tip concerning Eclipse Artificial Intelligence. Intelligence. It only learns new rules when you place your cursor on a conflict and pick the correct choice. If instead you just place your cursor on a conflict and just type new text, Eclipse learns nothing. Remember? You remember. I told you that. So if you go in there and you just use it as a word processor, it's not, it's not learning anything that you're doing. And that's okay. Sometimes you need to do that. Sometimes you just need to type in text, and that's okay. That's all right. You dropped, stroked it way wrong, heard it wrong, something. It's not that big of a deal. Don't freak out, okay? No big deal. Just type it in, go on. But the more you use it, the more it's going to understand what you're doing. But sometimes you just need to type text in, and that's okay. In other words, Eclipse can learn when you pick a conflict, but not when you type over it. Also, you should make your first conflict choice the more likely one. 
Then, in the Translate section of your user settings, you'll be able to ask Eclipse to pick the first choice when it otherwise would not know how to resolve a conflict. Got that? We've gone over this too. Remember? Okay. So, it's not that it's a big deal, but it's not. So, I mean, like, like the one that, that I was telling you guys about that I used is doing and dog. Guys, if I hit dog five times a year, ten times a year, that's a lot. I probably hit doing 40 times a day, okay? So it's just easier for me to hit DOG, but I know what it means. DOG with the asterisk means dog, okay? So it's just being able to remember that. But if you want to use it as a conflict, you can, okay? And it's always gonna pick, like say my doing comes first, which is the one that I use most. So it's always gonna pick doing. But once you put your cursor on doing over here in the auto magic, your first selection up here, more than likely is gonna be dog, okay? So it's always gonna give you that option to change it. So if you wanna go with this, you can, but be careful, all right? Mm -hmm. If you just wanna leave it in there as a conflict, you can and just choose it. So you need to go into your user settings and see what if it's checked or not checked and what you want it to be. Okay, so if it's doing something and you don't want it to do it, that's probably why, okay? Sometimes a conflict will occur in an exceptional context and you'll want to pick a conflict choice but not teach a context rule. If so, just hold down the shift key and press the conflict choice number. That will take care of the exception without affecting what the artificial intelligence has learned. Oh, whatever. I mean, if you're real worried about this number right here and you're gonna lose sleep because it went to 66 and didn't stay at 65, help yourself, okay? But, I mean, that's just another way of doing it. If you don't want it to remember that I changed it because of this, no big deal. If it's right here and it's a capital A, how am I going to change it anyway to a lower A? A. A. And hyper keys. Remember, it toggles it cap to non-cap A. Much more could be said about conflicts. But this is the subject of a separate in-depth ePower video tutorial that includes a conflicts kit with dictionaries that contain hundreds of entries that have already learned how to resolve beautifully. So this is a great way to take full advantage of Eclipse translation magic. Any questions? Let's see how to define slump strokes for speaker and conflict entries in your dinker and conflict entries in your dictionary. Here's an untranslate. This steno is not defined in my dictionary. I was trying to write the steno N-U-B-S. Instead, I wrote N-U-B-Z. I could define this as a new conflict in my dictionary, but this conflict would have to begin learning context rules from scratch. In other words, I'd like my new conflict to resolve as well as the older conflict that's been in my dictionary for a while. You see what it's saying there? So if you put it in there as a new one, then in the artificial intelligence, the more you use it, the artificial intelligence is gonna know every time he hits NUBS, it's always numbers and it comes up this conflict. So it already knows. So when it's with a the number, then it already knows to change it, okay? but you accidentally hit it wrong and put N-U-B-Z. So now you just created a new conflict. So now it doesn't know what you're wanting to do with this new conflict because it has, you haven't used it enough. Does that make sense? So the more you use it, the more it's gonna learn how you're doing it. But if you create a new one, then it's going to, you have to train it to learn what you're doing with the N-U-B-Z that you've been doing with the N-U-B-S. Got it? Here's how to define a slop stroke. At the Globaling dialog, you can press Control-E to open the special entries list. 
Then press the end key. Slumpstroke is at the end of the list. When the Steno Entry dialog opens, use your computer keyboard to type the letters of the Steno that you were trying to write. In other words, the Steno that belongs to your master stroke. And you see what it's telling you? So if you want to create this conflict and you want it to remember all of the artificial intelligence that it used from NUBS to NUBZ, this is how it's telling you to do it. Okay? So how do you do it? Global, and then you hit the slop stroke, which is at the bottom of the drop down box in the special entries. And once you do that, this pops up. And you write in what you were what you were trying to write, the correct way of writing. Teachers put that right there. So the slop stroke. I'll look. Huh? I'm sorry. The slop stroke is the it, you said, very good. Yes. The stroke that you were going, that you were trying to write, goes first. Okay, and they're going to show you why. So I'm going to back it up just a little bit. Use your computer keyboard to type the letters of the steno that you were trying to write. In other words, the steno that belongs to your master stroke. And press enter or OK. This will go in my main dictionary. When I pick conflict choice one here, if this is a new context rule that Eclipse did not know before, it will be added to the artificial intelligence for the conflict entry that is my master entry. So slot strokes point to your master entry. So you see what it did? Yeah. Yes. So you defined or you globaled NUBZ right here. But you wanted it to be NUBS. So see where it has the equals? As in supposed to be, wanted to be, should have been, NUBS. So now it's remembering everything from NUBS that you've used in the artificial intelligence and the number of times it has changed and what you wanted it to change to. Okay? Slot stroke entries are primarily designed to help conflict resolution, but they can also help with speakers. So you might have one speaker entry and a large number of slot stroke entries. So if you changed the text for the master entry, you would not have to change any of the slot stroke entries. Let's see how to define... See what it was telling you right there? On the slot stroke, it was the same thing. So, I mean, you can hit the answer bank or the question bank. Guys, I'm not kidding you, probably 10,000 different ways. I'm not kidding you. By leaving one letter off each time and doing one letter without that letter, holy cow. Or you leave two letters off, there is a ton, ton, ton of ways of doing that, okay? All right? So, I mean, you go into there, in there, define it, which is not that big of a deal. You can use it as a slop stroke, it doesn't really matter, okay? Or you can just put it in your main dictionary because if you've done it once, you're probably gonna do it again, okay? So I just put it, you know, like the, uh, like the answer in question, it's just easier to do it that way. Just global it, go into the special entries, question, Q, Q, remember? Q, there should only be one. But you hit the Q, it comes to the question, puts a question symbol in there with the brackets, go on. Put it in your main, you're done. So you don't have any? What's that? Of the things? Do I? Mm -hmm. Personally? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Oh. Turn that thing on. Yeah, everybody's going to have them. Because no one's going to hit the question symbol the right way every time. No one's going to do it. Well, what you said about you might as well just put them in your regular dictionary since you're probably going to do it. But so you still do have those things. Why would you put it as a slop stroke? Yeah. Why wouldn't you just put it in your main dictionary? Because artificial intelligence is going to remember. So like if you're doing the NUBS and the NUBZ, like the speakers, I don't think it makes that big of a difference. On the NUBS and the NUBZ, yeah. Because it's going to remember, you know what? When he does it with the numbers, that's how he usually does it. When it's used, when it's used NUBS with a number, then it automatically changes. Okay. 
So you can put it in there, it's still probably gonna do the same thing, you know? So it, it's not a huge, huge deal, okay? So don't freak out. Here they're just kind of telling you about if you're right, you're and you're the same. Seriously? I think I told you about that. If you're doing that, you may want to get into the auto mechanics class. <laughs> All right? Guys, you shouldn't be doing it the same. There's no way you should be doing these the same, you're and you're. Okay? It's and it's probably shouldn't be either. Okay? You know, it's a contraction. So it should be a different stroke for a contraction anyway, okay? Um, the only one that it's gonna kind of be close to is like itself, because you use the asterisk with it. Like it's in itself, okay? When, the, when it's the I-T-S, not the I-T apostrophe S, when it's not the contraction. But I mean, you should, all, you should write these differently anyway. But if, if you don't, and you're not willing to get in the auto mechanics class, then this is how you do it. This is how you set it up, okay? As a conflict. Backslash word. Backslash word, okay? Kind of skipping over a lot of this stuff because it's already stuff that we've gone over it's words that you're going to put with commas stuff like that if you do the the answer no sir yes sir all of that stuff that's all it's kind of going through right there okay Here they're talking about stacking. We've, we've gone over this stuff, guys. That's why I'm kind of going through it. We've already gone over this stuff. Stacking and shadow conflict, stuff like that. We've gone over this already. So I'm not gonna you know, waste your time or mine. Okay. Any questions about that? Not real tough. This one, guys, is important. Numbers. Okay. 
stuff that 